Check me with my new microphone. <laughs> Pro YouTuber now. Hello and welcome to Phil Galloway Draws. Now today it's gonna to be really quick fire one because I've been busy with work and might get an email at any time. We've all been sick in the house. We've had holidays. Ah, it's just been crazy. But I'm back. I've got more videos in the pipeline. So thanks for bearing with me. Now you may remember these fellas from a little while ago um, in my last video where we drew the faces and showed you how to draw them. Well today, nice and simple, we're gonna paint them. So painting over the pencil lines, um, it's probably going to be a little bit tighter than I usually would work for quick face studies, um, but you'll get the general gist of it. And overall, it's just about using base color, building up the textures, using your brush strokes to create form and having fun with color. If we can learn that from this video, perfect. Now everyone's got their own style when it comes to painting, but hopefully a few of these tips might help you along the way and give you a little bit of confidence to try something new. It doesn't really matter what you're working on, whether it's your PC, your iPad, what program you're using, whether it be it Krita, Coral, Procreate or ArtRage. Today I'm going to be using Rebel 7 Pro, which is really funky, but I am still getting used to it. Definitely worth a check out to, just to watch the paint kind of dribble down the page really. The fundamentals are the same, base paint, build it up. Now not all programs react the same, the paint doesn't mould the same and merge together the same. But if you kind of follow a, a bit of the principles of this and just have fun with it and experiment, you'll find a style that suits you. Um, and that's the crutch of it really. Use colour, be bold, be brave with it, and just have fun creating nice, simple portraits. These aren't finished products. These are just kind of quick thumbnail sketches. Each one took maybe 20 to 25 minutes each. Um, so just get experimenting, have fun, and uh, let's get to work. Okay, so we've got Rebel 7 Pro open here with our picture of our grizzled fisherman there, which we drew in the last tutorial. And first of all, as you can see, I'm using a, a very kind of thin wash uh, of an orange, kind of ochre orange uh, undercoat, really, a base paint, because there's nothing more scary, I think, and daunting than looking at a white page, uh, whether you've drawn on it or it's just a plain page. Uh, it's, you've got to get some colour down really. I think it helps with um, building your painting up but also just kind of gets something down and s helps you on your way. So a lot of Renaissance paintings, Baroque paintings, a lot of painters you'll see on Instagram and stuff will use this kind of colour, either a kind of ochre or an orange colour as their undercoat. And this really helps with kind of flesh tones going on top, especially if the kind of skins are a little bit darker. Um, you can really build up on that and then you start to see some of those orange tints coming through. Um, when you leave it blank, and you'll see on one of the examples coming up, when you leave the paint blank underneath, the paper blank underneath, sorry, um, you obviously have white showing through. Now that can lead to a completely different kind of portrait and if that's the look you're going for then that's cool. But I think for these ones, and usually what I would do, uh, would put a base coat down of some colour. And it's always fun to experiment with different colours as your base coat uh, because you'll find that you'll start using weirder and wonderful colours on top and just seeing that flash of pink or a flash of blue coming through really kind of excites your painting and can take it to a whole new level rather than just being a straight up copy. Now for this fella, um, as you can see we're starting to put the kind of dark kind of tones on. Um, I wanted to keep it reasonably realistic in the way it looked but you'll see I hadn't really planned out a kind of palette, I very rarely do, I kind of just go on feel. Um, but you'll start to see me introduce quite weird colours, blues and greens and stuff like this. And you've got to remember, when you look at skin on someone, um, it's very rarely just kind of flesh tint or brown or this. It's, it's got a lot of subtle changes going on in there. And you'll see some artists will paint a base coat of like full on green below because when you look at skin there is a very much a green tint to it um, and that's cool as well that can really kind of make an exciting portrait but for this one with the orange because of his tanned more skin and, and the kind of reds going down into his neck I thought let's keep it with orange keep it warm coloured and we'll start adding on top of it.
Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know sometimes I do a technique where I will du duplicate the pencil layer, put it onto the top and set the opacity down a little bit so I can kind of paint in between so I can still see my guidelines. And on these videos, there's a bit of a mix of of that technique and not really. Um, on, on this one, I did the wash underneath the pencil and then just started laying the darker tones, the kind of base dark kind of values down straight on top of the pencil. Um, so you kind of, if you have the pencil on top, it's usually for a more, if you're going for a very realistic painting where you need, you don't want to deviate from your pencil lines that you've taken so long over to kind of get right. Whereas these are quick studies and especially if you're painting kind of looser, you don't want to be constrained by those lines. You kind of want to use them as a guide and go over them. Um, and again, it makes for a more immediate kind of painting where you aren't just kind of filling in and kind of almost kind of colouring by numbers if you will. You are kind of using that as a guide and you're building on top. Um, so as you can see now, I've done quite a lot of the dark tones. I've added, introduced quite a navy blue there because across from his shirt and his eyes and his eyebrows and his hair, there was a kind of blue tint kind of coming across. And, and what you'll find with these kind of quick thumbnail sketches and quick doodles of people, whether it's a five minute one or a half an hour one or even or an hour one, um, you will go through a stage where you are completely unhappy <laughs> with the painting. And that's fine, ride it out, keep going. They, uh, there's always a stage where I'll turn to my partner or I'll just kind of say to myself like, oh, this is rubbish, <laughs> this isn't working. Um, keep going, it's usually, you know, as Batman says, the, you know, the night is always darkest before the dawn, just before the dawn. It's, it will come good. And if it doesn't come good, keep building on top, keep trying, and remember, it, it's digital, you've not wasted any paint. Um, if it really goes pear-shaped and isn't coming back together, you've not lost anything, just delete the layer, maybe start again, maybe something along the lines, maybe one colour was throwing it off. Like I said, I didn't really plan a palette for this. And on some works where I want to use a limited palette and I will be doing more videos on the kind of a la prima style where I m probably would have a bit more of a tighter palette so it doesn't kind of go all scattergun. Um, but on a lot of my work that I'll do, I'll just kind of get a feel for it and, and work the palette really, work the colour wheel um, and just try and kind of feel my way around of what colours might sit nicely next to each other. So there was a few kind of oranges across his cheek and I like to bring in some bright reds, um, which, you know, I, I'll try and use a similar colour on one part of the canvas or one part of the face and hark it on the other side so it kind of, kind of marries up the kind of scene or the face or whatever it will be and so your eyes kind of dance across. So as you can see with Rebel 7, you get some wonderful textures and awesome brushes. So I've been using a mix of the filbert brush and the knife tools. And um, you can really see the paint kind of build up and the kind of knife edge. And like I said, any program you use, the fundamentals are the same, whether that you get that paint build up or not. Be bold with your brush strokes, I think is the main kind of takeaway from it. And if you are using a program where you don't get those textures, don't worry. You can still use chunky brush strokes and some finer lines, but I like to start building up the kind of contours of the face by using different angles of the, br the brushwork, really. So if you've kind of got an undulating face, you know, bring your palette knife or your brush and chunky paint um, up one angle and then down the other, kind of almost making the kind of mountains of the face, the contours. You, you are creating the, the uh, 3D kind of volume of the face by the different angled brush strokes. Rather than painting all in one direction, which can look really good, um, but I often will end up with a flatter image. Um, and for these kind of immediate, quick studies of people, I wanted to kind of keep it rougher and where the paint kind of blends a little bit, but it's sitting on top of each other, it's just molding around the edges and you're getting the contours and the shape by 
the direction of the brush strokes and the colours used rather than actually blending the paint. Okay, so we're fast approaching the end of this study and I'm reasonably happy with it. Like I, like I mentioned before, these weren't meant to be finished things, these weren't going to a client, they were just little studies um, of faces and people I found on Pinterest and on the internet, um, which I, I thought would make for kind of interesting little portraits uh, to kind of show you guys. Um, and this went through a few iterations where you know, along the way where I was like, oh, this is not working. I might kind of go back a few steps, but it started coming together. And when I added those red flecks over the ears, it kind of just brought it together and added that depth in front of the, the darkness of the hair. Now I did try a little bit of background stuff and thinking maybe I could put a background in, but I thought it started looking a bit like a holiday brochure and I preferred it just with the head. And there he is. He's got those sad mournful eyes and hopefully we kind of conveyed it. Now moving on to this next chap. Now I really enjoyed the pencil drawing of this, but on on this one, I, as you'll see here, I used a red, nah, a red base paint. Now watch Rebel 7 in action. Look at that paint flow there. Oh, it's so cool to use. It really is fun. You can tilt the kind of canvas in that top right hand corner. You've got your tilt um, kind of wheel, I suppose, and you can angle the strength of the tilt. And if you add more, uh, medium or water or whatever it might be to your brush, uh, it will dribble down the canvas and oh, you can dry it as it's going, you can tilt it in other ways, it's fantastic, it's so cool to use. But as you see, I have done a full red, kind of light red base paint for this ruddy cheeked bearded man um, because I felt it would work better kind of with those colours popping through a little bit and make for a, a more lively portrait. And again, just showing the difference from the from the hat man in the first one, who we tried a bit more realism. This was with a little bit more of a limited palette in mind. He's got those kind of brown tones of his hoodie, which go into the red tones of his neck and his face, and then his, his kind of red tinted hair a little bit. So I wanted to use a, a, a warmer, redder palette across this one, uh, but same principles, big wide brush strokes, working fast, um, using the kind of colour wheel as I go to kind of build shapes and forms and, and kind of depth, but using the brush strokes to create those kind of contours. So as you can see, I have put in the kind of darker tones and we're starting to add a little bit of detail and a little bit of the highlights coming across and that's when the painting starts to kind of jump off the page. With using the pencil kind of prep drawing, um, like I said in the beginning, I, I, it's probably a little bit tighter than I would like to work. I would love to draw this guy again completely just using paint, no pencil drawings, really thick brush stroke, so it almost becomes more impressionistic around his face. I, I feel there's a bit too much detail around his glasses and his eyes um, to make it a kind of finished portrait. It's a really kind of nice way of working and doing quick studies and getting a feel for someone's kind of anatomy and their face and, and, and their features, but I do prefer working a little bit more immediate straight with the paint rather than the pencil drawing for these kind of portraits. If I'm working for a client and they need it to really look like someone, of course I'll use a pencil drawing, I'll show them the pencil drawing, and sometimes I'll pop that pencil drawing on the top so I know I'm keeping it really tight and rigid and it's gonna look like them. But I like my paintings to be a little bit more expressive than this and so definitely we'll be showing um, maybe in the next video or maybe in one of the ones coming up um, how I would go about being a little bit looser and a little bit more expressive. But this is a kind of good halfway house if you are finding your portraits are either a little bit stagnant, a little bit run of the mill, or you're just a bit scared um, of pushing your paintings that little bit further or being a bit bolder with colour, um, then this kind of technique will loosen you up. It's a really good one to kind of work um, that, this kind of style and immediacy 
as a warm-up study to just to kind of get your, your juices flowing, get your creative mind on, get your wrists and fingers loose um, and stop you kind of panicking when you come to something, you know. There's, there's no right or wrong as we've said in all our, as I say in all my videos, there's the way you want to do it and, that, and that's the way you want to do it. So these kind of practice studies will really help you find what works for you and and start to develop how you use digital art and digital paint. This painting never really went through a stage where I was pulling my hair out and was unhappy with it. I was quite happy with him all the way through it. I think because we got that red base paint kind of right and the little dribbles at the bottom and I just found it really kind of shone through and um, helped the, the painting kind of come along. I didn't have to kind of force it as much with loads of different colours in there. Now it's not an, um, an exact portrait of that man, it's not perfect. Um, like I said, I would like to attack him, I would like to tackle it um, with a bit more immediacy. But all the way through this, I was actually quite happy with how he looked in the little green flash of his hoodie there. And I think it kind of conveys his character quite well. So I was quite happy with that. So again, use a red, use a different color as the base paint, build on top of it. Okay, so we've got the old lady with the kind of cataracts and the wide glasses. Um, a tough one to draw this uh, because it doesn't really, it's not an exact copy of the photo. Um, now on this example I wanted to show you how things would work without a base coat. So as you can see I'm using chunky brushes, random colours, I thought the blues of her kind of cardi would, would be good and that kind of burgundy of her glasses would be good to kind of pick out and as a starting point. But as you'll see with no base paint underneath you're constantly feeling that you are having to fill gaps and that can be interesting and you can really build up a very textured, very kind of layered portrait. But it also can be a little bit frustrating at times because you might get one bit that you're really, really happy with, but then you get those flecks of the white canvas or the white paper kind of coming through that you, you know, you've got to deal with. Um, for other works, if it's just a kind of a quick study, you don't mind leaving it slightly unfinished. If you take out the pencil drawing underneath, it can look really kind of quite cool um, as, a, as a nice study. But I wanted to kind of show it in there that you don't always have to have a base paint. You can just start throwing paint on. Um, now this portrait of this lady did go through a few stages again where <laughs> it just wasn't really working. It's kind of annoying before in a warm up for this video, I did a version of this, this lady and it was really good. I was <laughs> really happy, but never recorded it. Didn't even save it. Um, it was really loose and immediate and had these kind of sickly greens across her jowls and cheeks and, and just really, really worked and I tried to kind of mimic that um, and, I, and I couldn't get it. So, you know, that is the life of being a doodler and being an artist that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But always remember to save as you go, I think is the kind of adage to learn from that one. Um, but it started coming together and like with a lot of paintings, usually if you get the eyes right or you'll come back and do the eyes again, you know, a lot of artists talk about eyes and being the most important part but because that's the kind of bit that can you know engages the viewer on a kind of different level we can kind of see into them and I found that with this lady once I got the eyes done and we kind of got that glassiness of her uh, whatever is up with that her, her eye I kind of tried to convey it a little bit but once we started getting the that emotion coming through and you, you add that little highlight in the eyes, it does start to work and it starts to kind of put your mind at rest that actually this is coming together, this is okay. If you practice doing these quick studies and sketches using wide brushes and kind of odder colours, you will find it will affect your, your kind of proper work and you might find just something that clicks into place, a little bit of freedom that you might not have thought or a bit more expressive kind of um, way of approaching things. And I often find that a lot of my work that I do is so tight for clients, it has to look like the football player, it has to look like the basketball player, um, that I kind of miss working this loosely. Um, 
So if you are one of these people who usually work very realistically or tightly, just have a go, you know, experiment with it. Um, use it as a kind of warm up tool. Um, these aren't meant to be kind of finished products, like I said. Um, it was more to kind of show you what could be achieved by being a bit looser. And I think we're gonna take it a little bit further in the next videos where we are really loose. There's no pencil guidelines. Uh, you know, you, you're using one brush strokes to suggest, you know, part of an ear rather than using 500 brush strokes and loads of blending to smooth it over. Um, both fine in their own right, but I like to work more immediate. So it's kind of what sings to me. I wish more clients would <laughs> ask me to do it in that style. But I'm happy being busy and that's the main thing. So you'll see I picked out some yellows going across her cheek and I probably warmed her up maybe a bit more than I would have liked and probably if I had planned a palette it might have been a bit more ashen um, and a bit more colder really but this is a kind of showcase as much of you know not really Rebel 7 as a, as a program but it's a fantastic thing to use but more use the colour you might not always get it right but it's really good to warm up and doing these kind of studies. Um, and she kind of came together okay in the end. It's not really like her, but if you hadn't seen the photo, you'd just go, oh, there's a painting of an old lady and that's a quick fun study. Um, it's nice and bright and it kind of works. It's not my best work by any stretch of the imagination, but using those broad brush strokes on the lips and everything is important and, and, and just have a go with that. Now for this, rather striking looking fella uh, who's got quite elongated features with his nose and his chin and his hair. I wanted to use a paler background again to show how it can affect a quick thumbnail study of someone um, and we are going to extrapolate this completely further on some tutorials coming up where I'll use neon backgrounds, I'll use bright blues, bright reds and you'll see how it affects the paint going on top but with a paler palette you can um, flesh tints work quite well with it but it, it does kind of lead to a more serene kind of looking things it's a little bit less in your face and I wouldn't tend to use quite as bolder um, quite as paler background as this usually I would tend to to force it a little bit more with a bit brighter now you'll see me flicking between I did again did a quick little study which I was really happy with but um, I liked some of the colors off it so I was kind of going back to, to kind of find where I was on that last little study um, you'll never quite get it the same way twice that's the thing with these and that's what kind of it makes them fun to do they are very immediate um, and they're good kind of little character show kind of studies of people but you'll see there with the kind of chunky knife brush brush that little blue, icy blue flick across his cheek. That's all that's needed, just to convey that that's a, a highlighted you know, ridge, if you will, a higher point of his face. You don't need any more than that. And these things could easily be overworked. Now again, this went through a few stages where it wasn't really working and it was looking, you know, bordering into almost like a kind of gouache, caricature kind of not a cartoon if you will but a little bit more um, stylized than I would probably like but with a little bit of tinkering and a little bit of playing and I tried some different grungy brushes and it wasn't really working um, so went back to basics and added a little bit more kind of definition around certain areas and you'll see in a second on the back of the hair just doing a little red stripe going around the back of his head just set the picture off and stopped it from being so wishy-washy. But while you're at this stage and while you're doing warm-up studies, experiment with things, see what happens, throw a, a random color on and you know a splash of paint here and there and suddenly it might just open up your portrait. And I think that's 
what this, I mean, I'm so busy with work at the moment and I've not had much time. Being able to do something so immediate and so quick was really quite refreshing. Um, and even if you just, all you took from this tutorial was, I'm just gonna splash paint on and I'm just gonna experiment before I do something really tight and strainful, you know, stressful on my eyes. It's a great warm up. It really kind of does kind of get you going and um, you might just get something there that kind of clicks and works and you're, you can take a little bit further maybe on another painting. So just doing that little bit of depth around his eyes and there with a little bit of orange and his, the red bit around his neck, I just thought it started kind of coming together and started working as a standalone little picture. Now it's not something you'd ever frame up. These are thumbnail sketches. You see a few people on, on uh, YouTube doing fantastic kind of studies in sketchbooks of gouache heads and things like that and they're really really good I, I heartily recommend you checking them out and I think that's what I wanted to convey on the digital side of things that you can just do quick studies of heads these didn't take more than 20 odd minutes to do um, and you can find something out about your art but also just warm up doing them and create a body of work and, and of head studies um, by working fast working loosely and working with thick brushes and, and unusual colours. So as we approach the end here, I tried a few different colours and different things, but I, I kind of stuck with the red at the back. Um, I hope, you know, it's just a quick one today. I hope you kind of got something out of it and you kind of, it's given you a few ideas to kind of play with and tinker with. Um, but uh, it just wanted to be a quick one today, nothing more than half an hour to kind of watch. You can dip in and dip out as you kind of go through. None of them are portraits I would you know, put up on the wall. That's not the purpose of them, of them. They were to warm up and to kind of loosen me up and to get me thinking a little bit differently and using chunkier brushes, looser paint, uh, more wetter paint maybe, and, and, and more bold, brave colors. You know, the world can be a dull place but it can also be a very very vibrant place and I think don't be scared of doing that if that's you know obviously if you're <laughs> painting dark colors all the time and that's your kind of somber looking stuff then it totally ignore me but I think it's worth experimenting with in your portraiture to use a little bit more kind of color a bit more emotion in your brushwork and see where it can take you so thanks for watching and I'll try and get the next video out a bit sooner this time. All right, see you on the next one. Bye.